You're approaching the outer limit. Our infinite struggle to intersect the axis, axis that, that is science, science and the elusive curve that is the, the universe. universe. This isn't science as we know it. Rather, science as we shall know it. Critics and colleagues are often best when they are one and the same. Indeed, peer review is the very lifeblood of a healthy scientific community. Recently, some of mine have suggested that this program be the likes of one in which I discuss topics like nanites while standing in a septic tank. While Brooklyn's Gowanus Canal is not technically a septic tank, if it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, deductive reasoning would suggest it a duck. This is the nastiest place I've ever been. Regardless of the Maison Seine, I'm not here to discuss nanites. But before I delve into this episode's monologue, I must engage my colleagues in dialogue. Thus far from our scientist toolkit, we've withdrawn three points. Observation, hypothesis, and experimentation. With vertices of analysis, we've got a scientific method triangle and the bounded area thesis. Science draws conclusions about the way the world is and the way in which scientific theory relates to that world. Science seeks to explain the concepts that are entwined in our everyday lives. Footnote, Wikipedia. Nanites entered the cultural lexicon with Star Trek as a community of nano-sized robots with sentient intelligences. While the topic does seem the reasonable consequence of modern technologies, the thesis that teeny tiny robots decide they're alive is in no way falsifiable. Mr. Spock's logic notwithstanding, we can't test it, Captain. Among Karl Popper's observations on falsifiability from his 1963 essay on Conjecture and Refutations is the tenant, a theory which is not refutable by any conceivable event is non-scientific. Irrefutability is not a virtue of theory. Nanites are nice, but so is a city in France. In our quest for outer limits, we mustn't be tempted by pseudoscience and non-science. Infinite limits can be found simply by rigorously re-examining the conclusions we've already drawn from within our current paradigm of understanding. There's plenty of science right under our proverbial nose. The Gawainus Canal is a concrete example of the human impact on the environment. But the anthropogenic impact on global warming is a conclusion that lies at the very limit of the scientific method itself. Outer limit field scientist Randy Corals has spent the last several weeks in Kotzebue, Alaska, looking at the human impact on the Arctic climate firsthand. Kotzebue was the site of Alaska's first weather station, built in 1897. Footnote, the Arctic Council and the International Arctic Science Committee. Arctic Climate Impact Assessment, Reykjavik, Iceland, 2004. The ACIA is the first comprehensive integrated assessment of climate change and ultraviolet radiation across the entire Arctic region, which together with the Antarctic Peninsula experienced the greatest regional warming on Earth in recent decades. Results include extensive melting of glaciers, reduction of extant sea ice, increases in precipitation, but a decrease in the duration of snow cover. These are interpreted to be due at least in part to anthropogenic intensification of the global greenhouse effect, although the El Nino Southern Oscillation and the Interdecadal Arctic Oscillation also affect the Arctic. Smokestacks are certainly bad, but they're not certainly smoking guns. Like the old joke, when is science no longer science, when lawyers gets involved suggests, the use of science as the primary arbiter of disputes has its own limits. Law needs science to be infallible. Inuit filed a petition with the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights on December 7, 2005, claiming global warming caused by the United States is destroying their culture and livelihoods. Scientific theories gain credibility from observations made in a genuine attempt to disprove them. With global warming, we're living in the experiment. It's hard to see the limit for the trees. Until next time. Make rigorous observations and be prepared to cite your sources. See you near the limit.